Now I ended the last video with all of our mechs either being repaired or refitted with the plan to drop by Detroit for a low risk operation. Then we can move on to Weldry. This detour is to ensure that my big hitters, then Centurion and both the Hawks, are ready since it will take a month and a half to get everyone combat ready. So we take the Detroit contract and get off. When Yang asks about improving the mech bay, as is previously mentioned, trying to work on mechs in the Leo's hangar is asking for trouble, but if you can clear a bit of room, it might just help. Of course, that would leave the rest of the ship a mess, but yeah, it's only for a short time, so I tell him to go ahead. We end up taking a hit to morale from the clutter, but Yang and his team are much better organized, which actually throws my planning off a little bit, because double mech tech score means it's entirely possible for my lads to be refitted in time for Weldry. Now here's the problem. As I've already accepted a travel contract, I can't abort it or change my destination, even though I really want to. The only solution is to head back to the planet and then accept the Weldry mission. And then we can move out again, wasting a few days in the process. Also, we get hit with travel fees from our original employer, but you know, that's not all that much. We've arrived at our destination, Commander. By your command. Finally, we get moving in the right direction, but now we have a new, much more critical problem. We're out of coffee. Specifically, Glitch and Decker at each other over the last of it, which is probably going in badly because Decker is the dead man walking meme king, and Glitch just can't stop murdering people, so yeah. The solution to this problem is simple. I drink it myself while maintaining eye contact to establish dominance, and also promise a full restock once we hit orbit. Sadly, any choice likely would give me a morale hit since, you know, no more coffee, but in this case, both pilots also get low spirits, meaning using morale abilities will cost them more. Now, I'm sure they'll be fine by the time we hit Weldry. Another financial month ends, financial. so I decided to mitigate that morale loss with a little bit more funding. Yang continues working through the mech bays, and I'm confident my bigger ones will be ready in time, so I feel like I don't need this blackjack just yet. My normal loadout for the ancestral blackjack is real simple. A pair of AC5, decent ammo, and a little bit more armor. Sadly, I have a shortage since I decided to let the Hawks keep both of theirs, so I make do with a PPC on his left arm to be a jumpy gun turret. Log. We get another event as we pass by Clough's stand, this time about our lack of medical supplies. Now it turns out that this system has a widespread black market in place, Meaning, while we could spend the money above board, if we really want to, we could try and acquire what we need on the cheap. After a few calls, Darius manages to get a whole bunch of drugs shipped to us before we make the next jump. The med booth should still be in place when we hit Weldry, which will be handy if anyone needs a doctor. Also, Darius, where the fuck did you get the coffee? Or maybe that was the medical supplies. And the boost is the medics and their caffeine fix, okay, that makes sense. Finally, we arrive at Weldry. We've got our best mechs all ready, our pilots are skilled up, Glitch receiving Bulwark to be our gunner, Behemoth takes Sensor Lock on her way to getting Tactician, and we also check out the store. Training. Now I'm tempted to buy a few of these things, but currently the Directorate owns everything, and they don't like us. So we'd need fences to smuggle things out, which ups the cost by a ton, and it's, it's all big hassle. But don't worry, we'll be back, once the new owners set up shop. So, we're liberating a penal colony. How penal is this colony? This place is a shithole. No, Weldry is legitimately a terrible place. It's cold, very little edible vegetation, and swarms of giant mozzies. Which is why Espinosa put a labor camp here to house all the nobles who wouldn't kowtow. The plan is, Kamea leads an attack on the spaceport, where the bulk of the defense forces are. Once the prison sends their own forces to assist, we sneak in, blow up everything, bust out the prisoners. Not only would they give Kamea more supporters, but since these prisoners were also hostages to convince the Oregon houses to play ball with Espinosa, it removes that bargaining chip from the table. So our lance is as follows. Duncan gets the Brawler Hawk, Glitch takes the Support Hawk, Behemoth takes the Lone Turian now that she can indirect fire with her 5 tack, and Decker gets his Punch Bot. And I really should get to renaming these mechs, but you know what, I'm lazy. Screw it, let's go.
Command interface initiated. Now there's no patrols or perimeter guards, which lets us move up quickly. Duncan and Behemoth go in right for the first two jennies and to set up a sniper's nest, while Glitch and Decker race ahead to get stuck into any mobile forces that were left behind, and they also begin working towards the other set of generators. Uh-huh. We've got an unknown on sensor. We've got a couple of vehicles on scope and turrets, obviously. Some of the latter get taken down by Duncan and Behemoth. Target confirmed. Target destroyed. As the others move up to Taking take on the, the vehicles. Road. This is the Warden. We have an intruder alert. All combat units, prepare to repel hostile. All weapons are go! Sadly no kills just yet, though I will throw in something I forgot to mention. PPC hits cause a reduction in accuracy. So even if it doesn't kill, it's still not good for that bulldog. And so it begins. Turrets always have sense lock, and that is the most annoying thing about them. Especially when they have the Calliope style LRM heavy turrets around. Thankfully, it doesn't look like they have any. We keep pushing forward, with the next turn mostly involving stripping some armor and clearing things up for Glitch and Decker. I copy. Commander. And also about a second of considering a DFA. But you know what, I want to save that leg armor for later. Here it comes. This should be good. The next turn though, he gets to stomp a tank as his compatriot on the other side finally tears through one of Duncan's legs. Bit unfortunate there, but it Armor just reach. means I have to it's make sure the enemy man. hammers the other side now. In response, I go for a double kill. Now sadly, my recording software decided to eat this part of the video. All it involved was killing a bunch of turret generators, which may not have been needed as it turns out the turrets have less health than the Jennies. but I wasn't sure if there were multiple turrets for each generator. No I'm actually still not sure now. We clear them out anyway, and move in to jump over the wall. That's a nice advantage of having jump jets, it's just like Mech Commander, you always want the jumpy mechs. Sit tight Commander, Lady Arano is aware of the situation, reinforcements are on the way. We've still got a couple of hostiles thinking around, but the good news is Kamea will be joining us pretty soon to give support. And if she's got that same Kintaro from three years ago, should be a cakewalk. Alright, so we got a Locust, which Decker jumps in close range of, and... Oh boy. Jägermix aren't the most dangerous things around, but it is a heavy with four order cannons and decent armor. I would say it's quite a bit more of a threat than that quick draw was last time. It's also got a Send and Trench Bucket in support, which aren't bad and a hilariously thin skin Jenna. Now in hindsight, I probably should have hammered that Jenna and taken it out of the fight right now. But instead, I have Decker to sensor lock the Jaeger and everyone else pounds on it. The best case, we can open up his side and start exploding that beautiful side ammo. Glitch also does a little plinking at the scent upon realizing how thin its armor actually is. I also try to get Duncan to lay into the Jenna, but it turns out the crafty bastard is defilade. Taking the shot. LRM spam really is a thing of beauty, as long as you're not on the receiving end. Oh, 
Oh, here comes trouble. Both with Khmer on the field and Decker doing Locked what he was made to do. Attack. Now, Khmer is in perfect position to flank and hammer that Jaeger. So, she fires her LRMs at the beginner and does nothing else. I'll be honest, I was I was legit angry about that move. This goddamn AI. She could have done so much to that heavy, and he would have been utterly screwed, and she wasted that turn. She had one shot, and she decided to blow. I'm really questioning my allegiance with this house. Wait, hang on, no, she's paying us to shit. Disregard. Go. For the reach! We keep wailing on the scent and LRM bombarding the Jaeger, though sadly we don't get any ammo explosion. All weapons are go! He moves back over, hitting Glitch hard, but in doing so, puts himself in harm's way. Roger. And Kamea shoots the arm. Why? I'm really beginning to think you learn nothing from Raju. Or he trained you wrong on purpose. Affirmative. We keep trading some fire, Behemoth finally ends the Jaeger mech. I her, damn you! We can't let this prison fall! And then we go full right, rock'em sock'em. The Jenna does another leap in Alpha, which results in it overheating. This is generally the only way the AI will do so, since they also suck at keeping track of jump jet heat. Decker drops a scent, and with that head hit, he puts it one health away from being pristine salvage. So of course, Kamea kills Steel Arana ruins my day again. The other pristine scent on the field, that is Behemoth's, puts that untouched leg armor to good use. Glitch throws down as well. And Duncan shows why the AC-5 is a good and decent gun by dropping him on his ass. Fun fact, if you have melee without moving and you have bulwark, it does proc. Mech destroyed. Finally, Khmer ends her kill steel streak, and with that, the prison is ours. Mission successful.